Today, we're going to be passing over to Layla from Process Driven. She is going to show us around how she uses ClickUp. If you are interested, you can join our new channel, Keep Productive with ClickUp, as well as Layla's feature channel, Process Driven. But this is going to be really interesting insight into how she organizes tasks, projects, and workload inside of ClickUp using her own system and processes. So I think you will enjoy this one and please do check out her channel and if you're new to ours, subscribe. Thank you very much folks. Over to you, Layla. Hey, Francesco and the Keep Productive community. Thanks for having me back here on the channel. I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes of my ClickUp account as someone who's a ClickUp power user, ClickUp vetted consultant, and someone who's produced hundreds of videos on the topic of ClickUp use and adoption and implementation. Hopefully this won't be too overwhelming, but because we have just a short time together, I am not gonna have the time to go into detail, detail, details. If you wanna find out more about anything I talk about in this video, just drop a comment below, like and subscribe Francesco's channel while you're at it to support him, and uh, let's get started. So first up here, we have customer experience. This is the area that organizes all data, tasks, and responsibilities around making sure the people we serve are happy, fulfilled, and getting value, hence the collective term of experience here. Inside this, we have our two major offers here, as well as content creation, almost as an offer in and of itself. Um, so we have our How to Click Up mini course, which is where we teach people how to set up ClickUp, and the Process Driven Membership, where we teach people how to set up a process HQ for their business. And inside each of these areas, I'll just show you a little example here, we see data, basically, that we collect. This is actually using almost the exact template we provide to our clients in the membership, but we have a database of all of our course information where each task represents an element of the course, so we can track the maintenance and update of that. We've got a task per resource or bonus deliverable that we include. So, you know, the CRM template that's included, the, the task management template we include, those kinds of things here. We have a feedback area that gets collected and intake responses, which is um, almost like a intake survey, that kind of stuff. And we kind of do this for each of our offers where we have almost a database of information and maintenance all in one spot. Now, none of these are actually tasks related to the offers. I'll show you where those exist in another space coming up next. Now, below these kind of database areas, we've got some task-based work. So below this, we have a uh, course content updates. We created, you know, two courses really uh, that really focused on ClickUp and we've been perfecting them for two years. And the reason we're able to do that is because we are updating our content every single week when ClickUp updates, which from a business perspective is a nightmare, but from a user perspective is really valuable because you know, most resources out there become very outdated very quickly. And so we've got kind of our sprint planning here for course content updates. That's some task stuff right there. Uh, we also have billing and supports. So we do use ClickUp as a ticketing system for tracking um, certain kinds of issues that don't come in through email. And that's what lives on this list. On this list, we have a form that is actually publicly available, as well as some views to help us sort out tickets and then respond to those tickets. Uh, again, this is just a template we provide to our members that we also use for ourselves. And I would say this gets a lot of activity, mainly from the support side of the team. Below this, we have some feedback tracking similar to the other things, and that's pretty much the customer experience area. We don't do too many views on the overall space of customer experience, and ultimately, I'm really in this area when I'm looking to develop new content, when I wanna expand what, you know, how to click up looks like for version four. Um, that's what I'm in here, but I don't spend a whole lot of time in this or really any areas of the hierarchy. I'm mainly looking at home or some everything views, which I can show you at the end. So. That is customer experience. The next area of my ClickUp is lead gen and fence shaking. This is referring to generating awareness for what we do and helping people decide whether or not we're the right fit. Even as a smaller YouTube channel, I think we only have 27,000 subscribers right now, this content side of our business is a very huge lift. We do a lot of work with organic content. So these two pipelines are a huge amount of work. Uh, inside here, you can see kind of how we have our content organized. We've got video production, video editing, which is shared with our um, editing contractor. We've got live streams we host as a separate production vehicle and then content publishing. Uh, this can be a little confusing to, to the uninitiated or to folks who don't have quite as complicated of a content repurposing process. But basically all of these ones that start with one are where we are creating something from scratch. We're creating the primary piece of content. 
So right here, we are at the all video production list and you can see this exact piece of content move through the journey that we have here. And right now it's in the recording stage. I have subtasks to break out the tasks that I am involved with, which is why I'm not often in here. I actually just get the task assigned and do it when it shows up. Um, when a video gets through this process, through a dependency relationship, which might be a little complex for some of you, but just it's kind of like a connected link. Once this piece of content is done, it kicks off via the dependency publishing tasks. This is where we're actually putting the finished video online. We're putting a description to it, a title to it. All of the uploading and repurposing kicks off down here. Next up, we have secondary content pipelines. Uh, this is exactly what it sounds like. This is basically our um, repurposed content, short form content, stuff that's not quite our primary drivers of marketing efforts, but we're still trying to put out there in the world. Uh, you'll notice throughout this that we're using the word pipeline a lot. I use that to refer to any situation in our ClickUp where we have a item moving through stages. Below this, we have two other areas. We've got a campaign area where we plan any sales pushes we have. That's kind of just like a marketing initiative filled with little projects. And then we have our content database. Uh, this is an area I'm particularly proud of. I, I know not everybody is you know, this geeky about things, but I love to have databases, uh, collections of information so it doesn't have to be in my head. And these are some ones that we use to store and reference um, commonly used marketing things between presentations that I give a lot, advertisements we have running, uh, pillar pages, landing pages, funnels that we have active, split tests that we're working on. I mean, pretty much anything that's in here, um, that anything that happens in marketing is documented here, even if it's not happening in ClickUp. So for example, the ads, we're linking out to Google ads, but we're tracking at least a piece of data around it inside ClickUp. On this content ideas list, I have a directory of every single content idea that we want to add. Uh, we just started categorizing it between long form and short form, but so you can see just the two ideas that are here. But uh, this is where we'll track key phrases that we're interested in targeting, topics I just want to answer, or things I'm interested in that I'd love to cover on the YouTube channel or in some other primary source of content. Um, there are 211 currently open, meaning those are 211 ideas that we haven't yet either killed or scheduled. And it just keeps growing because every time we get feedback from you know folks on the YouTube channel or a client, that results in us submitting a content idea here and adding it into the flow. So next up, operations and defense. This is the big one as like geeky process people. I'm gonna try to go fast because I know we don't have much time together, but um, first area we have here is Slack and ClickUp. That's what we call it at least. I covered this on my YouTube channel if you wanna check out the tutorial and how to set this up. It's also a template we offer for our members. But um, yeah, we basically built a chat room inside of ClickUp using these categories and it just replicates private messaging. This in combination with task-based comments is how Process Driven really doesn't use Slack or any other DM software. Next up, we have a bunch of lists that really tie into that idea of building an HQ of your business inside of your work management tool. The structures and the logic behind these structures are really something that we go into detail on inside the course and the stuff we do with our clients. So I won't go into the, the geeky details of that either, but leave it to say what we're building here is kind of like the knowledge hub of how our business works. That's what the toolbox is for us. It's a directory of every tool we use, every SOP we have, all networked together and reportable in dashboards. In fact, every single quarter on my YouTube channel, I will report on our performance in the toolbox publicly to the whole audience to kind of hold myself to account. Um, so that's what this area is. These other ones, team, it's, it's basically who's on our team, what are they doing, what's our events, time off, that kind of stuff. Human growth is where we put learning opportunities, things that people are working on to better themselves as people. Context is where we track the marketplace and information around us. Um, we have collaborators, competitors, inspiring stuff, all those kinds of things, as well as, ooh, here's a little fun thing. Um, I keep an important PD events list here, which is basically where we log any notable movements in the whole history of the business. You know, when did our prices increase? When did we start using ClickUp? When did we create the course how to click up? When did we create our fourth version of process driven membership? When did these things happen? We have kind of this log in this context category. Again, a database here. 
So much of this stuff, if you haven't gathered in my ClickUp, is really just databases and not nearly as much of it is tasks as what I think other people put in their ClickUp. Next up, we get to action tasks, a structure that we also provide to clients called capacity defense. It's kind of a framework or mindset for categorizing your work. Um, this is what we use for pretty much every task that exists. We have one little modification via a confidential list for HR and other private issues. But really 90 plus percent of actual actions we need to do in the business all live within this one folder, 90%. Like all this other stuff is data, context, it's useful, it's reference, but our tasks really are in just one folder for the most part. I've got tons of videos talking about this structure and why I use it for both personal and business applications, but leave it to say tasks are going here if we need to do them. Beyond action tasks, I also have ideas where we put ideas for things that we want to do, but we're not sure when. Uh, this is a huge help. We're at 513 right now, and we cycle through and clean up probably about 100 a month, um, either by killing them or doing them or something in between. And above this, we've got growth projects. Here we have a list per project for major initiatives that we are doing to better the business. Um, this might be launching a new offer, trying a new uh, software, doing whatever it might be. That lives in this area. Something that's kind of fun about how we organize these is growth projects are um, intra-team, meaning anyone from any part of the business can be pulled in to work on a growth project together, almost like a SWAT team. So we kind of keep it in this operations area to reflect the fact that it's for everybody. No matter what team you're on, you can get pulled into one of these special projects if um, it suits your skills. Now, I am already well over my time, so let's just go into the last section here, which is strategy and leadership. And this is how I'm actually organizing the major initiatives and strategies of the organization. This is a relatively new area, but I think it's pretty exciting. So I wanted to share it here just so you can kind of get a sense of what this looks like. Um, I ran out of time really at this point before I could show you all of the other spaces, all the dashboards I use, documents and so on. But leave it to say, as someone who I think is a bit of a ClickUp expert, if I can claim that label, and I've been working with over 1700 teams now to set up their ClickUp account and get things set up in a way that works, I still practice a focus on simplicity when it comes to my own ClickUp. We have a lot of databases. We have a lot of areas that are accessible, but honestly, our feature set is quite simple. We use very few features. The ones we use, we understand. And when it comes to putting tasks in their spot, we only have really one main folder that 90 plus percent of the team is ever doing anything in. Me, as well as almost everyone on the team, is never really using the hierarchy. We're all operating either out of our everything views where we have a few universal views set up or more likely out of home directly. We're keeping it quite simple. So even someone like myself, who's a ClickUp power user, I find myself gravitating towards simplicity to make it easier for my team to understand what's happening, find the work and not have to learn so very much to be effective and to really get the work done, which is what we're all here to do, right? But with that, I think we're about out of time. Thanks so much for having me back here on the channel. And until next time we chat friends, enjoy the process. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you're interested in checking out some more, you'll find them here. And also you can subscribe to as well. It'd be great to have you here to optimize your tool. And if you're interested in our new email newsletters or our Bento application, or even Tool Finder, which is a new tool that we've created to help you find the perfect productivity tool, you can find it linked in the description.